the Intel 900P. Cutting edge technology, revolutionary, the most amazing thing. How did Intel come up with a competitive NAND technology so quickly? I don't know. We need to explore this and it needs to be different than every other tech channel out there and yet the same. But this, this Intel Optane 900P SSD review is brought to you by a tech channel crazy enough to actually buy their own 900P SSD. Um, also we're computer scientists, so maybe that helps. So I kind of want to start by explaining what Optane is, although I figure most people watching this know what Optane memory is. Optane is a new type of memory from Intel and Micron. It's a partnership between Intel and Micron. And it has a lot of the same properties as NAND flash memory. It's like permanent storage, which is really popular in all kinds of, of products, computer products. It's solid state storage. But the technology promises to eventually, someday, maybe, be a different and simpler fabrication process, much higher write endurance, much lower latencies. It, it really looks like a next generation technology. The products so far, at least before the 900P, have been a little bit lackluster. Intel came out with NVMe 16 and 32 gigabyte uh, disks, which were designed to accelerate other SSDs. Uh, those things had a lot of ridiculous limitations, not the least of which was you could only use one of those 16 or 32 gig caching NVMEs with your boot drive. So if you had an NVMe and you wanted to use the uh, fast Optane storage to augment a mechanical hard drive that you were using as a secondary storage device, eh, sorry, couldn't do it. Well, now we've got the 900P and the 900P is currently available in 480 gigabytes and 240 gigabyte capacities. We opted for the 480 gigabyte capacity because we're spending money and honestly the 240 gigabyte version really did not make any logical sense to us. But it enters a market where past generation products like the Intel 750, the Intel 750, which is an in, you know, a NAND flash, pretty typical thing, uh, storage device, PCI Express, available in you know, U.2 as well, which is another PCI Express implementation. This thing is a super nice flash drive. There's more technology in here than will fit on an M.2. Uh, drive. There's just, there's so much going on here. This is basically an enterprise class SSD with enterprise class reliability available for the consumer. And there's a lot of parallels with this and the 900P as well because there are enterprise versions of the 900P available. The P4800X I think is the model. And then we've also got other things in the market like the Samsung 960 Pro M.2, the performance leader in the category, although not very often, in fact almost rarely, uh, the, the Samsung high-speed NVMe have not really been the value leaders in terms of performance per dollar. But the question is, is Optane that much better? If you read the Intel marketing material, you know, it's, Optane is much lower latency and therefore faster throughput realized and blah, blah, blah. Because we bought ours at retail, we waited for the price to come down because at launch the prices were crazy because everybody was buying these. Um, the price finally came down, so uh -huh, we're a little bit late with this, obviously. Now, we actually did do some benchmarking, but I feel like that there are a lot of other sites out there that have done a much better job than we can do with the time that we have in terms of benchmarking. And I want to call attention to Anantech and PC Perspective and Linus Tech Tips. All three of those have done relevant, interesting benchmarks with all three of the uh, you know, the different configurations, the 280 gig and the, the 400 gig. And uh, even, you know, a lot of tech tips went, uh, you know, above and beyond the Call of Duty, doing things like uh, game benchmarking and things like that. Was that a pun, Call of Duty, bench, game benchmarking? I don't know. So uh, things really weren't that much faster on the Optane in their benchmarks versus, uh, you know, something like a high-end 960 Pro. Now in terms of faster than a SATA SSD, yeah, sure. but. That makes sense. You've got a lot more bandwidth. You've got a lot more room to play in those scenarios. So for us, for computer scientists, the, 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 the question becomes, okay, yeah, just cut to the chase. I understand it's kind of faster in some ways, but not others. Just give me the rundown. So the Intel Optane, what's the deal? Read speed is about 2.5 gigabytes per second. Write speed is about two gigabytes per second. It does really well at something called Q-Depth 1, meaning that if you have basically single threaded IO, this thing works and responds really quickly. Typical NAND flash and M.2, 
uh, doesn't really perform as well when you're talking about having one thread reading and writing. If you're using something like a web server type workload and you've got lots of parallel requests coming in or an operating system where it's like where you're loading a program and it's loading all sorts of different files, then random IO is pretty decent on standard NAND flash and random IO is amazing with the 900P. But somebody that's looking at the benchmarks might say, well, why isn't the load time so much dramatically different? Uh, interestingly, it is bundled with Star Citizen. So with Star Citizen, you know, that is a super huge game and it does perform a bit better on the 900P, uh, but it doesn't really perform that much dramatically better when you're talking about a higher end, you know, uh, NVMe from, from Samsung or somebody else. And the question is, why is that? And the answer is because file systems have been optimized for spinning rust. So when we're talking about loading a game and we're talking about NTFS, NTFS is designed and the operating system around it is designed that the thing that you're storing stuff on is going to be glacial. And so when you get dramatically faster than spinning rust on an SSD, whether it's a SATA SSD NVMe or high-end Optane or even you know the Intel 750, uh, it's not going to make as much of a difference because you've removed most of the delay anyway. The operating system has a built-in RAM file system cache. It has built-in uh, methods of optimizing you know, random access, like keeping file tables in memory and things like that. And so when you're talking about some part of the operating system that has been as heavily optimized over the years as file storage and retrieval, an Optane SSD really is not gonna make that much of a difference in a best case scenario. It makes perfect logical sense if you think about it. So being the computer scientists that we are, it's like, where does Optane make sense? Optane makes sense in memory constrained situations. Let's say that you're working on a problem and you know, you're writing software or you're dealing with software that's not really super well optimized and you need a lot of memory. Well, you know, 480 gigabytes of DDR4, especially right now, is gonna cost more than a small house. So, a little problematic if you're a scientist and you're trying to solve problems. Uh, the endurance of NAND is also not great. If you were crazy enough to use something like NAND, you know, as RAM or as, you know, assuming that your problem set changes, you could wear out an SSD, even as enterprisey as something like the, the 750, even though the 750 is, is uh, you know, really well designed in terms of endurance. Optane is gonna be insanely way more endurant than the 750. So I look for uh, situations where I personally would benefit from having a system, having a server that has lots and lots of memory. And there wasn't really, there wasn't really a lot of scenarios that I could come up with. I ran a lot of tests with the Pharonix test suite, although a lot of the tests that I wanted to run were broken in strange and interesting ways, at least on the Fedora operating system. Some of the tests couldn't retrieve files and it was because the files were behind a CAPTCHA and you had to like manually download it and put it in the cache folder. And, and so that, that wasn't really a lot of fun for figuring this stuff out. But the things that stood out from our testing was that if you have a web server type workload using PHP 7.2 MySQL single server type workload, something with 64 gigabytes of memory, and you're using your Optane for both swap and MySQL storage, the system performed extremely well, even when it was very heavily loaded. Even with load averages over 35 and 40, the system was extremely, extremely responsive under load, much more so than running from an Intel 750, even a pair of Intel 750s in RAID 0, which is really impressive considering this tops out at 2.5 gigabytes per second read and two gigabytes per second write because two 750s in RAID 0 will double that. And it really does come, come down to the IO latency and, and some scheduling and some other stuff like that. So what else, what else really stood out? Well, there's another tool that I wanna talk about called Repo Surgeon. So if you're into uh, legacy source code control, repository conversion projects, as, as I sometimes get sucked into, uh, it works really well. So Repo Surgeon and uh, you know, CBS Fast Export and those, those kind of tools, this is an algorithm that is extremely not parallel and requires a huge memory space if you're working on a source code repository that is huge and old and complex. 
And so can you use an SSD as a really big swap and just let it run out of system memory and into swap and everything continues? Yes, you totally can. Can you do it with an Intel 900p SSD? In a quick round of testing, the 900p SSD works really well, about twice as fast. So if you can uh, you know, have a workstation and let's say 16 gigabytes of memory for our test and we're running the test and we add the Optane SSD 9 as additional storage, and we, our working set ends up being about 48 gigabytes. Well, it turns out that the Optane SSD 9 can complete that same job in about half the time that it would take if we were using swap on a Samsung 960 Pro M.2. But again, that, again, that makes perfect, perfect sense because our algorithm is not optimized for anything other than just running in memory. There's not a really well-designed thing that's sitting between uh, the file system and RAM buffers and the data set that we're working on. Um, so you got to take that with a grain of salt. Think about database systems, uh, things like MySQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server. Those are all really optimized to deal with the fact that storage is slow and memory is fast. And so if you use this for storage, you can handle a lot more transactions per second. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't make a dramatic difference for, you know, against something like the Samsung 960 Pros. And even we see like the one, these are the 512 gigabyte versions, but we also tested the two, no, one terabyte version. We also tested the one terabyte version. And the one terabyte version, because you've got more flash memory paths, more channels to work with on the one terabyte version, it's a little bit faster and it narrows the gap even more. So when we're talking about real world transaction performance, we were only seeing differences of margin of error between the Optane 900P and transactional things like MySQL. Now, is there more testing in store? Sure, I kind of would like to do more testing. It's gonna take a lot more time to do more testing and I would like to get to a point where the test suites that we're using are more automated. But I thought this was sort of an interesting video to just have sort of some armchair commentary on the Optane 900P SSD. I think for what it's worth that Anantech and PC Perspective and Linus Tech Tips did a good job testing the Optane SSD, highlighting its its strengths. Uh, I think Linus stopped just short of saying, "Well, but but why though? Because you know you can an NVMe 480 gig, and for what we paid for this 480 gig, you can get a one terabyte Samsung M.2, the 960 Pro, which is probably a better deal for the gamer, unless you're into the Star Citizen ship thing. I don't know. It's it's." Right now, at least that's that's my opinion. That may change as more testing comes in. Now, if you're a computer scientist and you're working on a project that uses repo surgeon or you're working on a project where it is basically unconstrained memory and you need a device that is not as fast as memory, but has memory-like latency, at least latency in between, it's about halfway in between SSD, typical SSD latency and system memory. But you've only got, I mean, system memory, we're talking 20, 30 gigabytes per second bandwidth. This is like two gigabytes per second bandwidth. So you don't really have as much bandwidth and Repo Surgeon really does benefit from having lots and lots of bandwidth. But Repo Surgeon also really benefits from low latency. So if you're working on those kinds of projects and those kinds of scientific workloads, then the 900P makes sense for you. If you're playing Star Citizen and you want it to load faster, maybe it makes sense for you, but I think you're gonna get a better deal with more traditional storage best bang for your buck. If you absolutely want it to be the fastest thing under the sun, 900p. So, I don't know if you wanna, if you wanna have a debate or share numbers or performance or you can think of interesting things to do with our Optane 900p SSD, definitely let us know in the comments or over on the forums at Level 1 Techs. Uh, this is the system that it's running in. This is a Threadripper 16 core. This system is a dream. I love this system. It's uh, based on the Fractal Define R6. We've got the Gigabyte Designator motherboard, which is really high in motherboard with built-in Wi-Fi for Threadripper. Right now we've got the WX7100 Pro Radeon. Graphics card is our primary GPU. Getting, getting ready to put in a Vega 64 as our secondary GPU, but you can see right there in our PCI Express Oh, that was in our that was in our by 16 slot. We've got our Optane 900P that we use for all of our testing, and it works really well on Threadripper. I have to say, uh, we also tested with a 10 core uh, Intel i9 um, 7900X. I think that one is, but most of our testing, especially in Linux, was on the uh, the uh, Gigabyte Designator X399. I love this system. Oh, we also just upgraded to an Intermax TR4 360 millimeter radiator. One of the people on the forum got that by mistake and sent it to us. And uh, yeah, it can overclock it. Runs at 4.2 gigahertz all the time. Well, 4.17, 4.17 gigahertz 
24 seven stable. I love this system. This system is so much fun. It's also got a Seasonic 1000 watt power supply. So it's extreme maximum overkill. At the moment, it also has that Samsung one terabyte M.2 in it, as well as, you know, sometimes I pop in the 1.2 terabyte Intel 750 just for testing. So I really like this system. It's a lot of fun. All right, that's enough of that. I'll see you later.